So this is policy as code for infrastructure as code. And my name is Colin Lacey. I'm a software engineer at Cisco. So policy as code, what does that mean? Well, usually in a CNCF context, when we say policy as code, we're talking about open policy agent, also known as OPA. It's a graduated CNCF project. And according to the website, it is an open source general purpose policy engine that works across the application stack. So some key features of OPA, it uses a declarative policy language called Rego, right? And that's the policy as code part. That's the language you'll be writing the code in. It has multiple deployment options, right? Sidecar, daemon on your server, a RESTful server, right? So you can run it as a RESTful application or a CLI. And that's what I'm gonna be doing during my demo today is using it as a CLI. It has a built-in testing framework, right? So the same way that you can unit test and behavior test your Python, Golang, JavaScript, or whatever, you can do the same. Unit tests and, and behavior test your policy as code. And then last feature I'll highlight, there are more, uh, but the last feature I'll highlight is that it can compile and evaluate in WASM modules for portability. So what I said, across the stack, you can run policy as code in the browser, right? Wherever you can run WASM, you can run policy evaluations. So I mentioned Rego, right? The policy as code language. What is that? Well, it's a purpose-built language specifically for writing policy as, policy as code in a declarative way, right? And that's what it looks like. Code, it's got standard operators, pretty familiar syntax but it's declarative, meaning you write policies, you write descriptions of what a matching adherent input should look like, right? If it's going to adhere to the policy, it has to match, here's the specs. Any mismatch means it automatically fails the policy. So let's say I'm writing a policy to approve something, right? I wanna approve this input. Well, if it matches everything, great. It passed the approval policy. Works the same way with rejection. I'm gonna test for, should I reject this input? If it matches, yes, I reject. If it doesn't match, great, it passes. I don't reject. If you wanna get hands-on with Rego, the team that maintains OPA uh, hosts the Rego Playground, right? And this is a great way to try it out. They have very useful real-world examples, like so it's not just a hello world. Real-world examples that you can see. How would you write policies for different scenarios? And if you're writing Rego and you want to test something out really quick, this is a great way to do it. Right? This is actually how I learned Rego. So a question might come to mind, well, is it really worth learning another language? And in the beginning, for me, I reluctantly came to the conclusion that yes, it actually is, right? Especially when that coding language fits the purpose for what it does, and Rego does. It fits the purpose really well because it's declarative, right? So the, the difficulty, for me at least, was in those initial core concepts. I'm used to imperative code, right? Write a function, it does something. Write another function, it does something, right? So we, uh, we execute procedurally. Well, declarative, Right? You're stating, here's how it should be, and that gets evaluated once, and if it matches, great. If it doesn't, it fails. So those initial core concepts were a little difficult, to me, difficult for me, and in my very unscientific drawing, this is what it looked like, right? where the initial difficulty was at the beginning, and then it leveled off the more I got used to it. And we might, some of us in this room, have come to the conclusion that when a language fits a certain use case, like HCL does, right? yeah, it's okay to learn another language. So. From here, let's tell a story, right? And this brings us to the demo portion of the talk. So I'm gonna introduce you to my open source library, because we're here, we're talking open source. It is not real, so please don't Google it. I'm going to introduce you to open garlic. We're clearly sticking with an open and then some sort of food item theme here, right? It's an open source library that solves all the world's problems plus three other things. Please don't Google it. Again, you will be disappointed. But I'm going to put this out there in the world. I'm gonna share my solution with everyone and we're gonna grow a community around it. It's gonna be great. I promise I won't be stressed at all. And I need some GitHub repos, right? I need to stand up some repos to put this out there, get contributors, have them open PRs, etc. I could 
go into GitHub and do that manually, right, in the, in the UI, or I could use Open Tofu and run an automation pipeline, CI, CD, deploy everything. It's gonna be great. So what's that automation pipeline gonna look like? Well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna write strict rules for how my Open Tofu configurations should look. So I want to inspect the actual contents of those files, right, those TF files, and make sure that they have all the things that they should, the things that I want them to. And I'm gonna use a tool called ConfTest. ConfTest, if you're not familiar, it's an open source tool published by the maintainers of OPA. And it uses Rego as its policy language, right? So it's very similar, it's very adjacent to OPA. And the policies that I'm going to write, each repo has to have a default branch, right? That branch is protected, right? So no one can push directly to it. Each repo has to have an admin team of maintainers. And we want to set archive on delete, right? For every repo that we generate. So what does that look like? Well, this is it. Let me get rid of my terminal. So this is my TF file, right? Where I'm going to do, oop, it did not show up. Oh, that's frustrating. There we go. So this is it, right? This is my main.tf file with all my resources defined for my first repo, my garlic repo. Okay? And there it all is. Fantastic. And I've got this rego file that's going to describe my policies. Here's how everything should look. So from here, I'm going to test my open tofu files using ConfTest, right? ConfTest is a CLI tool. So I'm going to test that main.tf and the policy I'm going to pass in is that repos.rego, the one I just showed you. Let me try that. Open my terminal back up and I'll write ConfTest, test, main. All right, so exactly the command I just showed. Great, it passes. I'm adhering to my policies, okay. First repo, fantastic, but you know what? I'm feeling like I, if, if this is gonna be an effective solve all the world's problems open source library, it needs a CLI. Can't have a, a library without a CLI. So I'm gonna add another repo. So I'm gonna copy a bunch of stuff from this part of my main.tf and I'm gonna paste it again to release the open onion CLI. And I know I should adhere to best practices. I should refactor everything to modules. I will do that later. I'm pretty stressed. I'm maintaining open source libraries. So now I'm going to run ConfTest again, right? And make sure everything's good. It failed. I guess my copy and pasting skills aren't as good as I thought they were. The repo onion, it should have had a repo team. Did I not? Paste a repo? I did not. So this policy as code can help enforce best practices even when you know you should and you feel like you'll do it later. So I'm going to do the thing I know I should have done and refactor this to use modules, right? I'm using my open tofu modules and I can still run my comp test policy as code against the module that I'm targeting, right? So here's my module, it's github main.tf, and it's got all the resources I'm gonna build, but now following best practices, do not repeat yourself. I'm testing something that will be applied to every repo I build out from here on out. So I'm gonna run conf test, test modules, github main, pass the same policy, and now as long as that passes, which it does, all of the repos that I build out using this module are going to adhere to my, my policies. Fantastic. All right. So now I'm going to tofu plan this. It's going to, it's going to add 14 resources. I'm going to tofu apply plan. And that's going to run. We'll come back to it. All right. So stage one, that's accomplished. On to stage two, all right? 
I'm maintaining this by myself. It's gaining some attention. People are using it. They're opening issues. They're starting to contribute. That's wonderful. And I'm tired. I promise I'm not stressed yet, but I'm tired. So I'm making mistakes. And one thing I really don't want to happen is for someone to accidentally delete something. Okay? So remind me, for anyone who knows, how do we delete things in open tofu configs? I know it's not, we don't write delete into the configurations, right? We remove something. Well, I already said conf test tests what's in your file. Something gets deleted when it's no longer in your file. So conf test can't actually solve this problem. So what I need to do, right? I need to make sure something doesn't get deleted without conf test. So let's look at an example real quick. So I'm going to minimize this. Oh, right. There we go. So from here, let's say I'll come into main.tf and I'm going to remove myself from this uh, team membership. So I'll run conf test. Uh, nope, sorry. I'll run tofu plan. Right, removing myself from this team membership, that's going to be one resource to destroy, specifically a GitHub team membership resource. Okay, that's bad. We don't want to destroy things. Right? But if ConfTest can't solve that, how do we solve it? Well, the answer right, nothing to be deleted ever, is we fetch the plan as JSON. How do we do that? We run tofu show dash JSON plan. So let's come back in to VS Code. All right, come back to the top here. And if I open this plan file, it is open tofu, so it's encrypted. Great. So I can't use the plan file as is, but I run tofu show plan, right, with the JSON flag. And there it is. It's all a big block of JSON printed into my terminal. So let me run that again, and I'll push it out to a JSON file that I'll open up, and I'll format. OK, here it is. This is everything. So when, it, when I run the plan and it prints out, hey, here's a thing that's going to be deleted, well, this is the JSON representation of that. Here, I'll minify this so we can get a better view. All right? And if I search for delete, I can key off that, right? This is part of the standard JSON for a plan output. I can key off that change action to see, are things going to be deleted? So from here, let's see. I was not planning on having to escape out of the slideshow view every time I switch screens, so you actually got a little bit of a view ahead. But from here, what I can do is I can run tofu show JSON plan, and I can pipe that into OPA. Remember, we've reached the limitation of what contest you can do, but OPA, I can run at the command line. The OPA exec command, that executes whatever policy I pass in against whatever input I pass in. So I'm going to pass the standard input, meaning what came in through that pipe. I'm going to pass that into OPA to evaluate. And then I'll pass that to the Rego folder where that repos.rego file lived. But instead of that file, I'm going to pass it into a file called delete prevention. And I'm going to run it against the reject policy. OK, so let's take a look at that. Let's see that in action. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to tofu show JSON plan, pipe, open exec. Delete prevention. And that delete prevention, that file looks like this. Like I said, it's keying off whether or not delete shows up in resource change actions. If any change action specifies something's going to be deleted, we fail, right? Fails the automation pipeline. So I'm going to run this. And there it is. Here's my result. It prints out this GitHub team membership for me, Colin J. Lacey, is set to be deleted, which is not allowed. OK, and if I go back into my main.tf and I revert that, come on, buddy. There we go. 
I run the policy again. Did that not save? Oh, that is true. There we go. And I tofu show JSON, show the plan. There it is. The result, no violations. Fantastic. Okay. We're doing great. From here, oop. From here, nothing's going to be deleted. Now I can really push it out, grow the community, and really ask for more contributors because this work of maintaining these projects is kind of killing me. But what I'm now interested in, what else can I do with that tofu show command? Well, one option, I can tofu show JSON, oop, show JSON, and not specify the plan file. That's going to show my state, my entire state as JSON. Remember, I'm encrypting. This is the unencrypted version, right? And I'm not going to show you a formatted version because my GitHub token is somewhere in there. But trust me, this is the, <laughs> this is the unencrypted version of my full state. So what can I do with this All right now that I have it? Well, one option is I can export this, right? So I can take that and I can export that state somewhere, maybe to a database, right? Using a Node.js script or any script. I just happen to write it in Node.js. So tofu show JSON and I'll pipe that the same way I did before, right? Piping that JSON output to my Node script. And that's going to push it up to an API. It's run by a MongoDB server. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. So here it is. Ah, man, this is frustrating. Come on, buddy. So here it is. This is my single pane of glass where I will view all the resources that I'm building and, and are stressing me out on a daily basis. It's empty because I haven't exported my state. Right now, you're just looking at my LLM generated logo. But if I come in here, right, I tofu show JSON pipe it to node state export. It ran, it's successful. I refresh, there it is. All of my resources, my single pane of glass, and my manager side, my former manager side of me is very happy. All right. So we've gotten there. So now I have inventory management. I still need contributors. I'm pretty desperate at this point. So from here, what happens? Community grows. I get PRs. I'm merging. I'm keeping track of issues. Burnout sets in, right? That's what happens sometimes. And when you get burned out, it's hard to maintain stuff. You think about quitting. Issues are piling up. Contributors are hard to come by. And when they contribute, they open PRs. I have to main, uh, review and merge those PRs. There's dependency patches. And I still have a day job on top of all this. I'm doing it in my free time. I need a break. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to put it out there into the world. Can somebody please take over? Any volunteers? Well, three heroic and very handsome gentlemen step up. Ringo, Gunther, and Arvis. Yes, Arvis is wearing a toga. They are real people with feelings. They are not pictures of me in recycled Mardi Gras costumes. So from here, what happens? Well, I want to make them contributors, right? So I'm going to take myself out of these configurations, and I'm going to replace myself with them. I'm stepping away. I'm done. I'm handing it off. What's going to happen here? The lead policy is going to flag it. Like, hey, you can't do that. So now I'm at this crossroads, right? I learned my lesson about not following best practices, so I really don't want to hard code myself in as OK to delete. That would be weird. I don't want to start them off by disabling their policy automation pipeline. That would also be weird. So instead, what I'm going to do, let me pull this back up. I'm going to tofu. Plan out plan. And we're going to see, right? It's got to destroy, two resources to destroy, two team memberships with my name on them. 
So wouldn't it be really cool, studs, all three of them, wouldn't it be really cool if I could take the inventory management part that I built right there and I could use what's in there to inform my deletion policy, right? I'm managing my inventory. I have my single pane of glass. And instead of just a blanket you can't delete, I can make a more powerful, beefier deletion policy, one that's fed dynamically by the state, the management state of my inventory management database. Wouldn't that be cool? I can do that, it turns out, because in OPA, in my Rego code, I can write REST requests. So I can query that API that I just posted to in my Rego code. And I can get data that I will then use to see what is and isn't okay to delete. How cool is that? So let's take a look at that, right? If I come into dynamic deletion.rego, this is what it looks like, right? I've got my send HTTP request function that I'm defining where if I pass in a URL, it's gonna write an HTTP get request to that URL. And then from here, I'll look at the planned deletions and I'll see which of them are okay to delete. And if something isn't marked as okay to delete, it fails the policy. So now that I've got that, oop, let me come back up to the top here. Now that I've got that plan, uh, OPA exec, centered in to dynamic deletion. Oh, sorry. Tofu show JSON plan. There we go. I'll pass that into this dynamic deletion policy. Right. These are the two resources that are going to be deleted, but they're not marked for deletion. So let me go back into my single pane of glass, and instead of the read-only view, I'll come into my admin view, and I will mark myself as deletable. Okay to delete. Okay to remove myself. And now I run that same policy. No violations. I'm free. So from here, yep, okay, so from here we get to the end of the story, the end of my time maintaining open source libraries. Arvis, Ringo, and Gunther go off to form a million dollar startup, and I am not jealous at all. I find peace and happiness walking my dogs every day. Work-life balance, it's priceless. If you wanna see the code that was used in this demo, that QR code will get you there. If you want to connect with me, ask me questions, talk anything, cloud, code, whatever, I'm on LinkedIn and I promise I'm friendly. And if you're interested in videos I post about code and cloud, I also have a YouTube channel. Last thing, I'll give you a second, I see some phones. More phones. Okay, last thing, I'm a active contributor to the Application Development Working Group, and we have a survey about developer experience, specifically the developer persona experience in the CNCF landscape. Um, that QR code will take you to the survey. It's going to help us gather information about the developer experience with CNCF tools. It's only 19 questions, it's actually pretty quick. I filled out the survey during the testing phase, so please, that will help us out a lot and help guide the direction of where the working group is going to go. And from there, any questions? That is one of my dogs. This looks amazing. Uh, question for you. Have you implemented any of the policy kind of shifting it further left, whether that's implementing it in pre-commit hooks or even found extensions for IDEs to show the OPA policies in your TF code so that you can just know before you even run the plan or apply how that's going to go? I haven't. Um, it's always been kind of one of those like bucket list items to write a, a pre-commit hook that's going to run part of my CI 
in my IDE, but I've never actually done it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it is a good idea. Any other questions? All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming out. I'll be around if you want to ask anything. <clears throat>